Right guys, we are back. It's deadlift day today. We've got Mr. Managi off the strength game with us today. Dan, nice to meet you again. Yeah, so he's here for a week, like he usually does. He's just gonna come here, assess our training. If we need help with things, he's here on hand instead of over WhatsApp and videos. So he gets a better view of myself and Luke training. Yeah, so anyway, we're gonna have some fun. What an intro and stay spicy. If you're knackered, we'll do less weight yeah. or maybe work up a bit heavier for two reps or something. Yeah. But I want to get get the eights in because I want you to pull eight reps at Briggs. Yeah. Uh, even before we were doing eight reps, eight reps at 220 was the first time I did that in a long time. So, uh, <laughs> does it look like I'm holding myself up, Simon? Yes. What sort of things are we going to be focusing on this week? Um, just nailing a few bits of technique, anything we need to work on, but the main thing is just getting a good idea where we are in training as we enter sort of the last five, six weeks till Brits and the Arnold and stuff like that. I think it's 300 just for a set of 10. I think that's all the working set I'm doing today, but Mr. Mawagi over there will see. What's your tummy for? Right, so when I was in school, I, I made a fact that, that uh, if it's five and a plus, it should always raised up. Five plus, it should always raise up. Minus five, raised down. So if you're like 174 body weight, you're actually 170. And then what if you're the 175? 180, five plus. If you don't understand it, five plus. Is the suit a new part of Tom's training? Relatively new. I think it was a week before Britain's Strongest Man <coughs> last year. I uh, got in a suit and it works really well for him. So there's no point not using a suit when you're allowed to in competition. And for those of people who don't know, what is the benefits of using a suit? Uh, a suit wants to be stood up. So when you get to the bottom of a bar, it's really compressed. So the suit just gives you a bit of pop, keeps your hips tight as well, keeps everything warm. <laughs> 270 then. No, it's 280. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah, 220, sorry, that's 220, sorry. Good job, Tommy. Have you washed this this year? In my sweat, yeah. That's yeah, really not clean, yeah. Oh. And we can pull it on a bit more for the yeah. main set of fuels. Oh, 
as we did look on me. It's going okay so far. So we're now going on to 300 kilos, so that's our top working set today. So I'm going for 8 reps um, with 300. I'll probably another set after. Tax the body. But um, yeah, so far so good, feeling good. Just keep chipping away. What, what, what comp is this for? Um, so we have deadlift for reps and the axle in Britain's Strongest Man. I'm thinking with this block, I guess, is the endurance aspect, which I kind of struggled at before. So if I'm getting, if both Tom and I are getting kind of eight, ten reps plus. So yeah, as you can see, um, you know, Luke's start the uh, straps off nice and loose. Sometimes I'm having down like this uh, at the start, no belt, and then as we gradually get more, we have tighter, tighter than this. The set before I. My working set, I put it tight so I get used to the breathing and stuff. And then obviously on the working set, it'll go a tiny wee bit tighter, but we've got a belt on top as well, which makes it even more tighter. Just so we get used to it. And obviously, like Dan said, it acts like a spring. Suits don't want to be down here. They want to be standing straight up. So the tighter it is, the more uncomfortable it is, but the more chance we have of lifting the weight. So, ta -da. Dizzy blood. Oh. Oh. You right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Breathe. Control it. I feel like your soul's leaving your body. That's why we do strong one. Because we don't have souls. So there's nothing to leave our body. Remember that. I'm only joking. We love you guys. How did your first set go, brother? Really good. No, I'm buzzing. That's the first time I've done eight reps um, on an axle of 300. And Comfortably, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, the first six was pretty quick. It's going the right progression, so. So I'm really happy actually how training is going at the moment. Just feel very positive, which is nice. Sometimes um, we can beat ourselves up and kind of concentrate on the, the negative sides. But for me, hitting, hitting this, it shows me that my progression is in the right, it's going in the right direction. So yeah, come Britain strong, this man. Yeah, I'm looking to do some damage in the deadlifts. I'm excited. I woke up this morning excited about the deadlifts. I'm excited for Britain's 2022. I'm very confident this year. Yeah, it's f***ing flying. That's why I want to do more than 10, because I want to feel fatigued right on the 10th one. Yeah. Like that proves I can do it. Yeah. Like for me, it's just... Deep breath at the top. What, eight months ago? Yeah, yeah. Eight with 220 would have been hard work with the breathing, so it's... The last time you came up, you did. It was like three with 300 and it felt like death. Yeah. yeah sure. uh, so we've done 300 for sort of the main working set, and then we're going to jump the weight up just for a single. 
They're about as knackered as they're ever going to be after pulling 300 for that many reps. How did it look? Really good. Uh, both the deadlifts are looking really good. Look easy at the moment. So put a bit more weight on the bar and feel something a bit heavier whilst they're fatigued as well. Like regardless of weight or... Yeah, it was good. I mean, I was wanting to do 10, but so I wanted to feel I like feeling fatigued at 10 and busting out another two reps and that's what I did. First, nine felt like you were flying and then 10th a bit harder, 11th harder, 12th harder. That was good. So yeah, flying, hitting what I meant to do. Feel really easy. The best model I've felt in a while is right now. I mean, I should have got one of these a long, long time ago because like it's not, the effort I'm putting into deadlifts now is like 20% less because of this. So very, very good. Um, but I'm working hard and every week I've hit 10 reps plus, so that's a good sign. Now we're doing 320 for us, saying we're just to get used to a bit heavier weight when we're fatigued as well. So now we've got the easy work to do. What difference have you seen since you've got the seat? We're all in June, I kind of buggered up my uh, hamstring and I was pretty kind of cautious of that for months after, you know, my deadlift kind of suffered and everything. I was like to Dan, let's try a suit and see what happens, you know, and my suits usually take a month or two to get in. As soon as I wore one, I think the way I pulled, the suit was very good. So I had it like four weeks before last Britons. Ended up winning Britons. Ended up trying with Bishop on deadlifts, which, you know, Bishop is one of the best in the world at reps. And I joined with him and didn't have a proper deadlift cycle. So I'm really excited to see what happens this year. And honestly, I could get if 3, 380 for nine, sorry, 359 plus is a, is a goal for me. And yeah, I feel good. So deadlift suits, man, unbelievable. Tickers by the by the Stoneman clan for getting a suit, you know what I mean? Do you know what his real name's supposed to be? Miyagi, Miyagi, Miyagi. Miyagi. Oh, Tom's got so much better on camera. I'm like, you should see what doesn't make it. There we go. See I'm naked. Do do do. Last set of deadlifts done. That's our main kind of work today is deadlifts. So Tom smashed out 12 reps of 300. I got up to eight reps of 300, which was really good. And then we went up to 320 for a single. And now we're going to do some explosive work. So five sets of three on box jumps. So we're jumping up to the mirror fit um, flat bench, nice and solid. Because Tom's weighing about 190 kilos at the moment. He's looking pretty big. So. Yeah, feeling good. Last week I was really fatigued after doing the, the deadlifts, felt really buggered, but yeah, a lot better, a lot better this week. So very happy and excited to do some hot and cold later on. So we've got the lads doing um, five sets of three of box jumps. Generally three is a really good number to do with any plyometric exercise. It sort of means that you're getting enough reps in to work, but you're not getting a, too many reps, so you sort of drop off being explosive anymore. Um, we're focusing on landing as tall as possible rather than tucking your feet up really high and um, like not really jumping that high. So the focus is moving like the hips or the head as high as possible rather than the height of the box are moving on. Nice floaty landing and step off trying to keep the knees happy. So we're being really careful making sure like Luke's stepping off the box. We're not landing really hard trying to float onto the box. Um, He's got a bit of niggly knee pain, uh, sort of patella tendon inflammation and stuff like that. So we're trying to be sensible, trying to look after it, make a few changes to either rep schemes or weights we're using in other exercises as well. And just trying to manage it because uh, by the time deload comes around, they'll be feeling pretty battered, but that deload week should get them recovered. Um, but then we've got two comps in a week. So it's just making sure that they're fresh and they can perform properly. So next up we are doing um, inclined face down dumbbell pulls or dumbbell flies, whatever you want to call them. So we're moving on to our accessory stuff. And yeah, just get a wee pump, make us look like, what's the thing with the big back? Strong man. There you go. What's up? Uh, the next lift is a face down chest supported row. Um, it just really isolates the back. You can't press heavy without a big back. You can't squat heavy without a big back can't deadlift heavy without a big back. So we're just getting some work in, um, 
reasonably high reps, we're going to be dropping this down, up in the weight, start shifting some sort of bigger dumbbells and getting as much size and as much blood into the back as possible. Uh, but yeah, the reps are going to come down so we can sort of put more focus into the primary lifts in the session. I like to mount benches like I mount cushy aggressively. Right guys, so next up is uh, single arm pull downs. So we've got resistance band, nothing too heavy. Big Tom is the man for setting it up. Why is it so small? Um, so the next exercise we've got the lads doing is a banded straight arm, single arm pull down. Um, so the hammer strength or Nautilus lat pullover machine, one of the best pieces of equipment for sort of getting lat work in. Um, a lot of places don't have it and then a lot of strong men don't even fit in it. So this is like the next best thing. We're focusing on pulling through the elbow rather than pulling with the hand. Uh, it sounds weird, but it just puts the strain in your back rather than sort of your triceps doing too much work. Just getting a good squeeze. And with the band, you get more tension, sort of a peak contraction as well. Not quite a bit, but it was all shoulder pain. But it's good it's going now. It's okay. um, especially after event session. I used to always, you know, doing dumbbell log. Yeah. Used to really kind of aggravate it, but now it's feeling better. Yeah, just kind of warming up and mobility as well. I think mobility's helping. So this next exercise is a chest supported like plate loaded row. I think it's another bit of hammer strength kit. Um, really good, nice range of motion. Um, you can do sort of croc rows and start shifting some weight, but you can get a bit twisty and you're sort of putting your lower back at risk if your form breaks down on croc rows. Whereas this, it's a nice safe piece of kit, can get loads of weight on it, do way too many reps and get a good pump as well. <coughs> So the final exercise of the day was hollow body holds. Um, in my opinion, these are one of the best core exercises you can do, especially for strongman. You're sort of training the core in its entirety, working through the hip flexors as well. Um, we've got the lads adding weight to them, um, but a few technical changes. Tom said he wasn't feeling it too well. So in the next set, I think we move on and like nail the technique and he really feels the benefit. and. Yeah, nice, solid, really good core exercise and gets everything working. Um, oh, right, let's just do two. Three, two, one. Oh, shish kebabs. Oh. Oh. You can do a plan with the sound. Job done, deadlifts done. Best deadlift session for a while, would you agree? Good chat. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, fatigued, you know. No, it was good. It was nice to have Dan up. Dan's just come up. What time did you leave this morning? Half past four. Half past four. So he was a little bit late um, in getting up. So it's okay. We don't judge. I mean, oh, shut up and get on with it. Anyway, <laughs> like Chaz, session was really good. Dan was just floating around like he usually does. Anyway, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, smile, and stay spicy. And don't forget to ring that little bell. Ding -a -ling -a -ling -a -ling. <laughs>